Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I want to set into part three of the second death. What is the second death? Okay, now if you have not uh, listened to part one and two, you may want to go back and do that. I won't go in depth in my recap right now of everything that I have said in those two teachings. That's over 30 minutes, the two of them. But I am going to do just a short recap um, but I told you earlier that uh, the, the, the wording, the second death, is found only four times in the entire Bible, and those four times are all in the book of Revelation. Okay, and then I explained what the first death was, because that's so fundamental that we understand that first, so we understand what the second death is. Uh, what I want to do today is the two relevant scriptures that I'm using, I want to read those to you. This is going to be Revelation 20, 13 through 15, and then Revelation 21, 8. And both of these scriptures talk about the doing away with uh, through the second death. And I want to read that to you. Today, I'm going to read both of these in the disciples' literal New Testament. I like the disciples' literal because what they've done is gone back to the Greek scriptures, the Greek, and uh, they have not added any more words into this than they have to for it to make sense in a sentence. Now, I printed this off to show you what I'm talking about. This is the Disciples' Literal New Testament, and you'll notice as you read across here, the words that are in uh, italics has been added to it. So right here, if you see where it says, each one, see the word one, is in italics. That means they added that in. And I love Bibles that do that because then you can read it without those words that were added and see if it changes the meaning. Many times it will absolutely change the meaning. And I love to have Bibles that show me what's been added and then I can remove it and read it without it. So let me read this to you in the Disciples Literal New uh, Testament. Uh, Revelation 20, 13 through 15. And the sea gave up the dead in it, and death and Hades, the realm of the dead. See, this does not say hell because the literal is the word Hades. Let's keep going. And death and Hades gave up the dead in them, and they were judged, each according to their works. And death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if any was not found having been written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Now, I want to read this one more time to you uh, like I did the other day before I move to the next scripture and read it. The second death uh, is... Death and Hades thrown into the lake of fire. Remember, I read it to you. Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. But now if we just put in front of that the back part of the sentence and read it the same way, it reads exactly the same meaning. You can It's interchangeable. This is the second death. Death and Hades thrown into the lake of fire. It really gets that simple. Okay, so right here... In this scripture, what was judged is death that was holding people captive in the sea and death and the grave. That's what Hades is, the realm of the dead or the grave. So what is being judged here is not people. It is these entities that hold people captive, the sea, death itself, and the grave. And these were judged for their works, and they, death and Hades, they were thrown into the lake of fire, and anything, now I know our Bibles in verse 15, I've said this in another teaching, the literal Greek here does not say, and anyone who's not found in the uh, book of life, it's not talking about people here, that word right there is simply the Greek word any. So if any was not found, so anything that does not bring life and it brings death, 
it is thrown into the lake of fire here. It's the doing away with what came into the world through Adam. Now, let me go on over, and I'm going to read it the same way out of Disciples Literal New Testament, Revelation 21.8, okay? But the cowardly, the unbelieving, and having been abominable and nerve murderers, sexually immoral, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, their part will be in the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, with sulfur, which is the second death. Now, people have, theolog theologians have input into scripture that this is people being burned either to death, which would make more sense to me if you were really going to make it about people dying, that it, they would just be burned up and done away with. And that's where people get the theology of annihilation, that God is going to just throw people in a lake of fire and burn them, destroy them, and then there's nothing left of them because, you know, he's not really mighty to save. He just destroys anything that gets in his way, right? He's like this parent that can't put up with the rebellious little child crying or being mean, a disobedient little child. So instead of me working to correct the child, I'm just going to destroy the child because, see, that's what a good God, a loving God, who is full of mercy, would obviously do, right? And you know I'm being facetious now. But what I'm saying is this verse right here is actually not talking about God or Jesus, the Son of God, killing people or torturing people. This is the refining fire. That lake of fire is a purification pool. It's going to purify anything that does not bring life. Now, will people be purified in this uh, lake of fire? And it's not a true fire. The word fire means Pure. In the Greek, it's P-U-R, pure, okay? So what it's going to do, this pool of purification will take away anything that does not bring life. So in the first part that I read to you, Revelation 20, 13 through 15, uh, God is getting rid of anything that's continuing to bring death into uh, humanity and into the earth. But over in Revelation 21, 8, what we see here is the purification process of people. And God is not destroying people here. He's purifying them of the things that's not allowed to come into the New Jerusalem, the city. Okay, that goes on into the end of Revelation 21 and into Revelation chapter 22. It talks about, and the gates of the city are never closed, but only the people who are pure, who have been purified, can come into the city, and those who are not completely purified cannot come in. So let's just go ahead, and let's see what I can bring into this today. I want to read this to you. Uh, this is Psalms 88. Uh, verse 10 through 12. This is so wonderful. Listen to this. Will you show your wonders to the dead? Shall the departed arise and praise you? Shall your steadfast love be declared in the grave? Or your faithfulness in Sheol? Shall your wonders be known in the dark? And your righteousness in the place of forgetfulness where the dead Forget or are forgotten? Did you know I can answer every one of those questions in the Psalms? Yes, 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 yes. Praise be to the Lord. Praise be to the Father. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, the dead will know his wonders. Yes, the departed will rise. The ones who are dead, they will rise and they will praise God. Yes, they will. God's steadfast love will be declared even in the grave. Your, his faithfulness will overcome Sheol, the place of the dead, the place of ruin, those who have been destroyed. Shall your wonders be known in the dark? Oh, yes, Jesus is the light. He is the light. He is the life, the light to all people, to the whole world, and your righteousness in the place of where the dead have been forgotten. My friends, we need to quit thinking that death in this physical body puts an end to what Jesus and our Father can do because they're a lot mightier to save than what some theology have allowed them to be. Now, here's where I want to bring in these scriptures. I was talking about how 
in the uh, pool of purification, people who are not already in Christ. See, people, the Bible talks about how we will die twice. We're going to die physically, right? And then we're going to die to sin because what happened is Adam died twice. He died in the spirit realm. He fell into sin and then he died physically. So we see Adam actually dying two times in the garden. And in the Greek, I mean, I'm sorry, in the Hebrew, it actually says that. You will die and then you will die. So he died spiritually when he stepped into sin. But then his body, it took him over 900 years to die, right? So that's what happens to us. We die to sin when we come into Christ. We are dead to sin, so we die to sin first, and then we die physically, so we will live forever when we are in the resurrection with Christ. But watch, people who are not what we call saved or born again, they're going to die twice also, just in reverse. They're going to die in the flesh first, and then they're going to die to sin, and that's their second death. See, we've already died a second death. We died to sin. And now, after our bodies give out in this, see, we are saved through death, not from death. We will, our bodies, as far as I know, every human being has died. So, yes, Jesus saves us through death. So, watch. We have already died to sin, but we live for Christ, alive to God, right? But we will die in our physical bodies as believers, on the other side of death, because those people died physically first, they will die the second death, the death of sin, on the other side. So let me read you some scriptures here. And this is uh, Romans 6, 2. Aren't you aware that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Romans 6, 4, we therefore were buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of our Father, we too may walk in the newness of life. And uh, Romans 6, 8, for anyone who has died has been freed from sin. That was verse 7. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also, also we will live with him. Okay, so what I want us to see here is that, see, we died to sin when we came into Christ, died with Christ, and uh, we are alive in Christ. So what, and I like the uh, heading on this, it says, dead to sin, alive to God. All right, those are my verses that I wanted to pull in and show you that, see, we've already died to sin. These people in the second death that have to go that I was reading just now over in Revelation 21.8, they are the ones who have not what you would call received truth yet. They haven't received Jesus and they have not applied Jesus into their lives here in the nasty now and now. On the other side, in the afterlife, they are the ones who will be dying to sin through the purification pool. Okay, and here I, I mark this again. It says, what is the second death? It is the first death, what is taken lives, that and the grave, they are thrown into the lake of fire and destroyed. And that's where Jesus can say, there will be no more death. He has taken away the order of the first thing. So up in uh, the first part of Revelation that I read to you, I believe that's Revelation 20, 13 through 15. So see, we see uh, two processes of the second death. The first part of the second death is actually, in fact, death itself and the grave where dead bodies have to have a place to be, those are destroyed and done away with. And then we see the other part of uh, the second death is the purification of human beings, not the destruction of them, the purification of them, and they have their portion or their part in uh, the lake of fire, the pur purification pool. Now, that word, their part, it means a part due or assigned, an allotment, okay? So these people will be purified 
in the afterlife. Let me see. Now, I, I'm probably going to call this a wrap-up for today, and I hope that this makes sense. But let me. I'm going to go into overtime and just read this scripture to you today because I want to wrap this up with a really strong scripture. Colossians 1, 19 and 20 in the Amplified Bible. For it has pleased the Father that all the divine fullness, the sum total of the divine perfection, powers, attributes, should dwell in Jesus permanently. And God purposed through, by the service of, the intervention of Him, the Son, all things should be completely reconciled back to Him, whether on earth or in heaven, as through Him the Father made peace by the means of the blood of the cross of Jesus. I'm signing off. I love you, and I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.